The new ARC90 chassis by Deepcool is a case and CPU cooling solution in one, featuring an integrated Captain Series liquid cooling system with a 280mm radiator and two RGB fans that's tied to a distinct external flow indicator. Combine this with high-end features like tempered glass side panels, EATX support, and tasteful RGB lighting, and the new ARC90 could house your next epic PC build. Click the sponsor link in the description to learn more. Excellent! What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. Today's video is like the Empire Strikes Back of the Riptide build. Riptide is the new system I'm putting together, uh, just recently assembled part one in the Corsair 1000D case, which is a very large full tower case uh, that supports up to two systems, a full size EATX uh, size system up here, as well as a mount for a smaller mini ITX system down at the bottom. I'm building this system to be a functional, system that I'm going to use for the foreseeable future to edit videos as well as operate as a free NAS. So free NAS is going to be the mini ITX build on the bottom with a bunch of hard drives. Then up here we've got a dual 1080 Ti's, third upper 1950X. This is an all AMD system too, by the way. And then a Ryzen 5 2400G uh, APU powered system down at the bottom. If you watched part one of this build, you'll notice that I got everything together and functional, but there's a lot missing. Now this being the middle video in the build, I have a bunch of small tasks that I need to take care of, things I needed to figure out that I couldn't quite figure out until I had the system put together. And then of course, the big question of all of these RGB LED fans, as well as RGB LEDs. How do you actually connect all these up get them functional and looking good in a case like this. So I'm gonna focus a decent amount of time today on the RGB setup because it is fairly complex. I got these Corsair LL series 120 millimeter as well as some 140 millimeter fans up at the top there. Those are controlled by the Corsair Commander Pro and you get one of these pre-installed in the system and you can also add more because they can daisy chain together via USB. So can I go over some of the more specifics of how you actually connect the fans up to this to control both the fan speed as well as the RGB LEDs. And then I have other things here, like you might have noticed I never installed an SLI bridge. That's kind of a minor thing. I have a heat sink fan for the uh, APU system down the bottom. Gonna install some of the SSDs. Gonna install this 10 gigabit NIC that comes with the ASUS Zenith Extreme motherboard that's uh, at the center of this entire build. 10 gigabit NIC is uh, probably something I'm gonna need to add onto my home network to actually be capable of supporting, but it's good to have that as well. Finally, there are some logistical concerns uh, for the FreeNAS system down at the bottom. I need to figure out how to get my drive set up for that, an operating system SSD and a cache drive. I was considering using the NX500, but I think I'm actually gonna go with a riser card and then one of the M.2 slots on the board. More on that when we get to it. Beyond that, gotta get measurements done for the cable sleeving, and then I think that will be all for today, but uh, there's also this one last thing. This is an ASUS ROG Loot Crate, showed up a few days ago, and I'm gonna be using some of these peripherals in here uh, on the system once it's actually fully put together. Now, if you wanna see a full unboxing of all the stuff in here, check out Kyle's channel. He already did that, uh, but I, for my part, am going to take this out of the Loot Crate right now. So one of the dilemmas I encountered uh, with this build, since it is uh, co-sponsored by ASUS and Corsair, was that both companies make peripherals. So I was like, all right, ASUS or Corsair, Whichever of you can send me like a loot crate made of wood and put your peripherals in that, then that's whose peripherals I will use. So here from ASUS, we've got the RG Strix Fusion 500. Uh, this is an RGB 7.1 gaming headset. Wireless, uh, I don't use wireless headsets that often, so I will have to give this a shot and try it out. Next up, the RG Gladius 2 Origin. This is a gaming mouse. It's got a detachable cable, 12,000 DPI optical sensor, and of course, illuminated RGB logo and everything, of course, compatible with the ASUS Aura Sync software. We've also got this guy right here, of course, also from the ROG line. This is the RG, RG Strix Flare, gaming mechanical RGB keyboard. Uh, this one has a pretty cool effect in that it's got some lighting effects along the edges that lights the desk underneath the keyboard. Give yourself some of that desk lighting that everyone is so after. So that should be interesting to give a shot as well. Uh, Cherry MX Red switches on that one, since it is of course mechanical. And then finally, we've got the RG Scabbard, which is a mouse pad. It's gaming, it's a gaming mouse pad. So guys, I'm probably gonna take a closer look at this stuff once I actually get the system set up back in the computer room. But for now, if you guys do want a little bit better look at these products, check out Kyle's video. He did an unboxing of this loot crate because Asus sent these loot crates to quite a few of uh, us YouTubers out there. And, uh, you know, see what he thought of it. Look, this even includes rubber texture of the bottom. That's fun. 
I feel bad for not getting the NX500 out of the box in part one of this video. It is a very pretty and substantially serious looking SSD. Uh, and this does scale in capacity up to, I believe, two terabytes, or at least one terabyte. Uh, though this is the 400 gig version. So for the time being, I am going to pull one of the 1080 Ti's. And that's basically because these uh, are effectively three slot 1080 Ti's due to the cooling solution on top. We have dual spacing. Uh, so we have four full length PCI Express 6x16 six slots, but they're double spaced. So with these cards in the top and third full length slots, they're blocking the second and fourth full length slots, which means our expansion cards cannot be installed. And since I want to install the operating system on this, I'm going to get that in there. Now, fortunately, once we switch these to water cooling, they're going to be a lot thinner. So we will have access to these slots once again. And of course, adding this graphics card back in and setting up SLI won't be much of a challenge, but getting this drive in to get the operating system set up is more important right now. So I mentioned this a little bit in the first video, but this power supply shroud is also the mount for your mini ITX motherboard. So if you need to get at the power supply, you need to pull this shroud up, which isn't that difficult to, to get out. There's only two thumb screws that hold it in. But if your mini ITX system is all set up, that might be slightly more of a challenge. So what I'm going to do right now is take any cables that I think I maybe might need in the future, including my uh, USB adapter here for Corsair Link because all my peripheral cable plugs, um, they're trapped in there and it'd be really difficult to get at when, once the system's all put together. This is important not just for future expansion possibilities, but also just to make sure I can plug in everything I'm gonna need to plug in because uh, all these Commander Pros have their own individual SATA connector that needs SATA power and that's so it can distribute additional power to all the fans and stuff connected to it. And even these little breakout units, um, there's two that come with each three fan 120 millimeter LL kits, and these all have their own separate SATA power connector as well. So I need to make absolutely sure I've got plenty of SATA power connectors, not just for all that stuff, but I'm gonna be adding four mechanical hard drives, each will need a SATA adapter, and then uh, SSDs as well. So need lots of SATA power. little added piece decided on this uh, actually just this morning so ideally for the NAS we're gonna have all the drives connected for big storage uh, and then there's gonna be one SSD for the uh, BSD free BSD to run, uh, run off of and that's what FreeNAS runs on and then having a cache drive is also very useful and uh, just recently Optane has been available and Optane is actually pretty functional as a cache drive for FreeNAS at least from what I've been reading this morning so for now, I'm gonna install this, and uh, this is just to get it installed, and then I still don't have my main operating system SSD for this yet, so we'll wait for that to arrive, but this will at least be ready to go. Also, I have not confirmed uh, the ECC memory I'm gonna use with this board yet, so for now, just using this Corsair 3000 speed kit. This is a very good kit to use with Ryzen, very compatible, Works with, has worked with every Ryzen system I have put together so far, and um, runs at 3000 speed, which is a very good speed to run for a Ryzen system. Also, I cut myself, so I've bled for this system. The PC building gods have been appeased. field trip that's tradition for the Riptide build series. Uh, we're headed to Newegg will call pickup right now to get my eight terabyte mechanical hard drives. Four of them for 32 terabytes total. Uh, it's, it's about $1,300 after tax. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of money for storage but I gotta shoot in 4k you know. Gotta save all the data. We've made it to the Newegg Hybrid Center and the way that you know your professional New Egg Shopper, if you come to Will Call, is that the, uh, the ready for Will Call pickup email came in while we were on the way. Let's forget about that. Yeah, 
You know, you guys improved their hard drive packaging. WD Reds. WD Reds look a lot whiter than they used to for some reason. Uh, these are Red Pros, uh, which means they're 7200 RPM and 8 terabytes each. So back here on the business end of the 1000D, we've got the French doors that hide the cable management area. And I didn't show the cable management area very much at the end of the first build for good reason. Look, it's complete chaos back here. There's a good amount of space width-wise, but you're actually kind of limited in that you don't have any cable management area at the top or on the front right up here. Okay, fortunately, these French doors can lift up and off. This one was kind of stuck, but I tried the, the rear one before and that one was a lot easier. So there you go. So if you are doing a lot of work back here, you don't need to worry about those swinging out and open. Also remo removing the tempered glass piece itself is very, very helpful for working back here. Now, right now what you're seeing is all the cabling for that original build. I did attach these extra cables uh, from the modular power supply so they'll be ready for when they are needed. But there's more stuff that needs to go back here. We are going to add one more Commander Pro, and that should be able to stick on somewhere around there. And then there's also these little breakout units that came with the LL Series 120 millimeter fans. These come with the three fan kits. Um, there's actually a couple of them, so you can plug this one if you're not gonna be using uh, a Commander or some other form of control for the LEDs. This will control it themselves and you can daisy chain off of it. This does need its own SATA connector, but we're not gonna be using this piece. We're just using this and this can control LEDs for up to six fans at once, and then it will feed over and connect up to the Commander Pro. Now the Commander Pro, you can connect up to six PWM fans too. You could use a, a, like a two fan splitter off of each of these to connect up to 12 fans, for example. Um, but then you also have two LED control connection points there, and you can use those to break out uh, into those control units that I already showed you up there. You have four temperature sensor connection points, so you can use those with the included temp sensors and position them wherever you want in your case. And then you get a couple USB 2.0 pass-throughs. Since USB 2.0 headers on motherboards are becoming less and less common, in fact, I believe my uh, Zenith Extreme only has one, uh, you can connect one up to the Commander Pro and then use this breakout to connect other USB 2.0 control necessary devices. And that includes more Commander Pros if you want to daisy chain them, or you can also uh, connect up like the USB lead from the AX1600i power supply, for example. So here's a quick walkthrough of how you would connect one of these Corsair LL series fans if you wanted it to work. First off, just like any normal fan, four pin PWM fan plug. So you can plug that into your motherboard or to one of the fan headers on the Commander Pro if you want the uh, Corsair Link software to be able to command, control, and sense the rotational speed of your fan. So that's the main functional bit. And for the LEDs, you have this uh, additional four pin header coming off of the fan. And then you have this device known as the Lighting Node Pro, and this will come with that uh, three pack of fans that um, I have four of. Now it should be noted that the Commander over here and the Lighting Node Pro have duplicate functionality. So if you have a Commander, you don't necessarily need to use the Lighting Node Pro. This is what confused me first off, because this is what you actually get some power for. Uh, and then you also have a USB connector for that, so you can plug it in again to one of your USB 2.0 headers on your motherboard. But if you look at the pinouts here, there are three pin headers, whereas the fan has a four pin header for your RGB connection. This is where it might start to get a little confusing to set up all your RGBs because you've all got all these different individual breakout pieces. But if I can try to explain this simply, once this has power and once it's connected to your motherboard, the RGB header on here will help control one of these. And this has connection points for up to six fans. You should also pay attention to the fact that these are numbered and that numbering is actually important because if you're doing fans that are right next to each other and you want them to all sort of blend together and look like they're putting on a, a fancy light show, you need to tell this controller which fan you're connecting to which header. Now, as mentioned, our Commander Pro here has two LED connection points so we can basically ditch this breakout piece and that is a little bit convenient for making things slightly simpler. So all that is to say that there is a lot of wiring and cable management that still needs to go on back here. Not just for the RGB LED fans, but remember all these hard drives and SSDs that I also need to connect up to. So I've got some work ahead of me. Fortunately, the current version of this build before all the water cooling stuff goes in, I have 12 RGB fans. I'm going to add eight total to the front so you guys can get the full look of the front. Three in the top and one in the back. So that, that equals 12, right? Yeah, 12. And what that means is I can use two Commander Pros to connect six fans to each one. And then I also only need two of these little breakout pieces to connect up all the RGB LEDs to. So I'm gonna go dive into my strategic zip tie and Velcro reserve, and then I'm gonna attack this mess. 
Wish me luck. Attempting to work smarter here rather than harder. I am labeling all of these uh, cables for the RGB LEDs so that hopefully once this whole rack is installed on the front of the case, I'll be able to uh, plug these into the proper connection points on the control box. Motherfucker. That's right. I'm not sure if you can tell whether or not I've made any progress here. Joe's helped too. Mainly everything was my idea. Okay. So all the fans in the front are mounted and I've gone through and labeled all of the fan headers, the RGB ones, with the proper order they're supposed to be in. One through eight in the front, uh, up to 11 at the top, and then number 12 at the back. Uh, I'm also trying to separate this stuff out right now. So I've got my RGB LED cabling off to the side over here power cabling at the center, and this will allow me to hopefully get the power cabling routed where I want it and kind of cinch down and out of the way, and then provide me a little bit more room uh, for mounting the LED stuff. Now, because there's another phase for this build where I'm gonna go in and add the water cooling stuff, I'm probably not gonna actually be able to mount this up here. Like for instance, I would want to mount this other Commander Pro towards the front of the case, so I'd have easy connection for all these RGB uh, connection points, but that would cover where I need to get at to mount probably a double reservoir in the future. So probably just gonna have it hanging in there, but I'll at least have stuff tidied to the point where it's at least hanging out where it should be. I discovered a minor complaint with this case here, which is that the far right power supply tray really sticks in there. And I think it's because when you pull it out, it flexes a little bit, and it makes it bulge out at the bottom and it's right up against the flat metal plate. And so that just uh, makes it more challenging to remove. So because I'm probably gonna need to move my front Commander Pro here, I'm trying a temporary mount solution. Joe suggested this, it was his idea. Uh, just using some Velcro, and I wrapped another strip around the Commander Pro just so I can stick it there. Kind of hold it in place. It's not bad. All right, so all that needs to happen now is fans to plug into the hubs, and then fan LEDs to plug into these controller guys. All right, guys, I think we're at a point uh, where we can try out the fans that we've connected up and give you guys a better look at this case, fully kitted out with all of the LL Series fans from Corsair. Uh, the cable management area here is much improved. I will note that there's a big area here at the top that I haven't tried to tie down. Again, that's because I need to come back in here when we install the water cooling stuff and get at some of this stuff. So I didn't want to uh, tape everything down the way it should be. But uh, all the fans are properly labeled, plugged into the LEDs in the proper order, so hopefully once the software gets loaded up, I can go and tell it uh, what order to do all the fancy RGB stuff in. Got the two com Commander Pros installed, and then I have this big grip of extra cables down at the bottom tied away so that when we add more stuff, more SSDs, when I plug in these SSDs in the back, for example, I've got the cables ready to go for that. Now, I did want to point out that uh, my intent today was to also get the SFX power supply installed in there and connect it up, but I ordered it from Amazon with one day shipping, and it's supposed to get here today by like 8 p.m. So I'm probably gonna need to save that for the third video, and the third video is gonna include the custom water cooling, and uh, I'm looking forward to that, but I still have to do some measurements uh, to get the cables, and also, of course, get all the water cooling stuff on order, uh, so I can get all the radiators, pumps, GPU blocks, and uh, maybe even a, an upgraded CPU block for the Threadripper 1950X too. I think to close out this video, though, we should probably turn this system back on. See what, see what those fans look like. Joe, can you assist? 
We should show them our, our, our technique for lifting a case. This is my idea. It's a two-man lift. This is Joe's idea. That's all I did all day, just give that ideas. <laughs> it has hard drives in it now, too. Oh, let there be light. Oh look, they're in order. So you can see the color that this one turns becomes the color on this one, becomes the color on this one, and it, it cycles. All right, there's a train going by right now, but I will say, it's always nice when you set up a new system, turn it on, and the fans automatically adjust themselves back down. It's like really quiet right now in this. Well, all right guys, that is Riptide phase two, now complete. Feels much more filled out with all those fans in there. This being an extremely large case really requires a lot of hardware to be installed. So the fans being one, and I still feel like there's a lot of empty space up in the top, but that will be filled in once we get the water cooling stuff in there. So uh, stay tuned for part two coming very soon. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. And of course, subscribe if you wanna see my new videos when they are posted. And uh, hit the little bell icon to get yourself the notifications too. Thanks again for watching guys, and we'll see you next time.